trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 5. All right, all right, all right. How many of you get a little bit excited when that music hits? How many of you get a little bit excited when you hear that music playing? Oh, well, you should. You should get a little bit excited. That's some good stuff. It means something good is coming. And that is the uh, that is the top left red button on Professor Paul's studio board. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Legion of Michael, and welcome back. And thank you... For all of you who support the show, thank you to all of you who support the show, all that you do. And if you don't support the show, well, then then what are you waiting on? Like, how can I support the show, Paul? Well, you could tell somebody about it. You could go to your favorite podcast player, whichever one that is, and leave a little star or a thumbs up or a heart or a like. or a... You could even take all of 90 seconds and submit a review of the show. Oh! <gasps> I don't have 90 seconds for you, Paul. You could click the legionofmichael.com link and you could go sign up for the church security program, the distance learning program called Legion of Michael. Uh, You could do that. You could do a lot of things. All right. You saw the title. Yes, you did. And if you didn't see the title, go back and read it. Mm, The Nice Compromisers. How many of you have, quote, air, I'm air quoting here, nice people in your life or reasonable people in your life and you've been sad or shocked or dismayed at their compromising or that they have compromised what you thought were probably their values or things that were important. Look at what we have done over the last three years in the United States of America. I don't know what's going on in the other countries of the world. Most of them are socialist slave uh, states. But here in the United States, how many of you live in states where the commissar, where the uh, your king, your queen that sits in your state capital said, you're not allowed to go to church because of the Kung flu. Say, yeah, but we can go to liquor stores, we can go to Target, and we can go to Kroger's and Lowe's. We can go to Lowe's and Kroger and Target, but we can't go to our churches? No, because your church is not essential. And then when, and you knew people who were like, well, I mean, they said we're not allowed, so we're not. And then when they finally, quote, allowed you, to go into the house of God and worship him. They said, well, you got to wear a mask and cover up your face like a good slave. And you're not allowed to sit near anyone. And you, you can't sing or talk to them. You just have to sit there six feet apart from each other and then put your head down and slough out at the end. Wow. You're like, that's kind of hardcore. Yeah, it is kind of hardcore. That's compromising. Uh, How many of you know people that uh, make excuses for those who are engaging in a sinful life? They're living a sinful life, and and they are reveling in sinful behavior, but your friend or your coworker or your church member says, well, yeah, well, I know that what they do is technically, I guess, technically not okay. I mean, I guess it's technically a sin. Is it technically a sin or is it a sin? And we're like, well, I mean, I guess it's technically a sin, but I don't, I mean, but they're a nice person. They're a good person. Oh, what is, what is your definition of a good person? What does that actually mean? A good person. Is that what uh, Christ said? If you want to be saved in order to be saved, you have to be quote, a good person. Is that what the Ten Commandments say? Is be a commandment number ten, six, five, four it says, uh, be a good person. What does be? A, what does that even mean? You see, people who engage in sinful behavior, people who are evil, people who are uh, minions of Satan, they don't think that they're evil. They think that they're good people, 
Adolf Hitler probably thought he was a good person. Joseph Stalin probably thought, if you ask him, are you a good person? And he'd say, yes, I'm a good person. The idea that we would say, well, yeah, but they're a good person. Uh, Solomon had something to say about that in Proverbs uh, 21, verse 2. Every man's way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. And then going back to verse 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. (gasps) That's right. That means your salvation is not based on the human or the the, uh, secular definition of, quote, a good person. You see, we hear this all the time from the agnostics and the the I don't believe in your God and so on and so forth. People are like, you know, I don't believe in a God that would condemn someone uh, to to you know eternal damnation, be- even though they were a good person, just because they engaged in fill in the blank, just because they engaged in sodomy. I don't think I don't believe it because they're a good person. Just because they went and killed their unborn baby because it was going to be super inconvenient to them. I don't think that you're, I don't want a God who would judge me. Of course you don't. That's the human condition. The the human condition is we don't want to be judged. We want everything, you know, what does it say? Every man's way is right in his own eyes. Do not lean on your own understanding. And that is what the world says. That is what Satan, the great deceiver, has convinced us that we should do. The great liar, the great deceiver, the master of lies, convinces humans that their way of thinking is the correct way. And if God's way, if if somehow the word of God contradicts or doesn't jive or line up with their way of thinking, well, then they don't want to believe it. I'm not going to believe in a God that that would condemn me for committing what he considers sinful behavior. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, man. Compromisers. We have compromisers in our churches. We have compromisers in in our lives where and say you say well compromise you know the 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 rational and the I'm not going to say elitist but the rational reasonable people in our lives like well you oh uh, come on Paul you everyone compromises a part of life where in and, and they'll give you you know they'll they'll give you examples like like I didn't want to eat a whole cheesecake. But I knew I wanted something sweet, so I only had one small piece. See, that was compromise. Or I compromised with my child. I told them that if they did X, Y, and Z or whatever, then we could go to get ice cream or, or whatever. And they, these compromisers will tell you that's how you're supposed to live your life. You're supposed to compromise. You know, when you come to a situation that makes you uncomfortable or, or you have to make a, a decision, rather than make a hard decision or take a hard stance and say, no, absolutely not, zero. You're like, oh, come on, you, you have to be willing to compromise because that's how we live our lives. That's how we get along. We compromise with each other. Imagine a burglar breaking into your home and you confronting them. And they say, I'm taking all of your money out of your home. Take all your money. And all your, everything is valuable that I can carry. And you say, no, you're not. And he says, all right, tell you what, I'm going to take half of all of your money and everything that's valuable out of your home. And I'm going to take it from you. And you say, no, you're not. And he's like, come on, man. Aren't, aren't you willing to compromise? No. No. What should we, where should we compromise and where should we hold firm? Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to your faith, when it comes to your salvation, when it comes to your mortal soul, I would say that you should probably hold firm to the values you say, well, where does it say in the Bible that you shouldn't compromise? You know, give a little here, give a little there, you know, a little here, a little there, you know, it's, it's good. 
You see, but the trick is with the constant compromiser or the nice compromiser. See, this person that we're talking about is not your enemy. They're not your foe. They're not your, they're the, they're your nice neighbor or they're your fellow church member or maybe they're a relative or whatever. And you're like, oh, they're, they're a nice person. But when it comes to making hard choices, to making a stand or taking a stand, you know, there's times when you look at them and you're like, okay, well, when this situation, certainly they're going to take a stand. They're going to say no or absolutely yes or absolutely no. And then like, well, I mean, if we have to do this just to get along, we have to go along to get along, then I guess we'll go along to get along. You say, yeah, that's right, Paul. And there's nowhere in the Bible that it says compromise is a bad thing. You guys ever read the book of Revelations? How many of you forget sometimes that the words of Christ that are in the book of Revelations. Now, the, the primary Bible that I have is a New American Standard Bible from the uh, 70s. It's a 1970s edition, and it's a red-letter version. And for those of you that don't know, red-letter versions are the words of the direct quotes, the direct not, and then Christ went over and he did some stuff. It's the direct quote from Jesus Christ are in red. You flip into the book of Revelations, especially the beginning, the first few chapters, you're like, wow, look at all the red letters. You see, when John was being given this vision, Christ spoke to him directly and said this, listen. One of the things he said was uh, in verse or in uh, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16 of the book of Revelations, this is Christ speaking, he says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever heard that before? He said, neither hot. If the water is hot, we drink it. If the water is cold, we drink it. If it's lukewarm, we spit it out. You see, that's what happens when you become a constant compromiser. When you become a constant compromiser, you become lukewarm. You're like, oh, that person's not evil. They're not unrighteous. Like, no, they're not, they're not evil. They're not unrighteous. But they're a compromiser. And they compromise their faith and their values when they should be taking a stand and saying, no, absolutely not, world. I will not engage in that behavior. And I don't care if 10 million people on planet Earth tell me it's a good idea. Uh, the Lord, through his instructions that he's given us, through his word, says that's not a good idea. That is sin. I'm not going to approve of it. I'm not going to engage in it. And it doesn't matter that you tell me it's okay. I'm not going to compromise with you. I'm not going to compromise my faith. We've talked about this before. There's only 10 commandments, not 278. There's 10, man. You know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not die, but have eternal life, should not perish, but have eternal life. Believe in him, keep his commandments. It's really simple. It's not complex. And anything that goes against that, it's okay to say no. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to engage in the ways of the world because that's what Satan has done. Satan has told us, hey, if, if what God says goes against what people say, then God must be wrong. If what your heavenly father says is not popular with the secularist, with the ways of man, well, then just go ahead and ignore it. If you want to be reasonable, don't you? Uh, look, all these other people are doing it. It's reasonable for you to do it. Or if all these other people are doing it, well, then, then it must be okay. Just keep your mouth shut. Even if you don't engage in the behavior yourself, just keep your mouth shut about it. Nice compromisers. We all know them. And it's sad and it's disappointing when we encounter these people who are like, well, I mean, but I don't know. Where in the Bible does it say you shouldn't do that? And you're like, um, in the very beginning in the book of Exodus, 
Have you ever read the words uh, in the New Testament, the words of Christ? Um, there, there's all over the Bible that says that. Well, I never saw it. Well, then you didn't read it. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. It's there. And let's face facts. Most people know deep in their hearts. They know in their guts. They know in their soul that it's wrong. But they listen to the words of the deceivers. They listen to the words of the compromisers. They listen to the words of the reasonable people. And the reasonable people, the compromisers, lead them away from their faith. They lead them away from their father. They lead them to the way of man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Every man's ways are right in his own eyes. I think that's, well, I think I'm a good person. Okay, congratulations. What does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with salvation or not with salvation? Everybody thinks they're good. Murderers, psychopathic murderers think they're a good person. If, if you ever, this is kind of sick and twisted, and I don't mean to go here, but if you ever listen to interviews with, with monsters, with the death row inmates who uh, were serial killers, they blamed their victims. The victims would still be alive if they wouldn't have behaved the way they did. Yes, even psychopaths <laughs> morally justify what they do. Everybody thinks they're a good person. Every man, Solomon knew this thousands of years ago. Every man's ways seem right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts of men and women. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, you're a compromiser. And neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. There's no room for compromisers. When it comes to our faith, when it comes to our salvation, when it comes to the salvation of our children and our spouses, there's no room for compromise with the world. There's God's way first, and then man's way comes second if it doesn't contradict God's way. We don't compromise because it's the nice thing to do. We don't compromise our faith and our values because other people say we should do it just to be reasonable. I know you know a lot of nice compromisers out there. And they're slipping every day. The nice compromiser, the one who compromises his faith, is slipping and slipping and slipping away. All right. Pray with me, if you would, the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.